What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video, I just wanted to give you a few more tips and tricks to help you to complete 50 waves of Onslaught on Legend difficulty. I made my video talking about roaming supers and how good grenade launchers are for general ad clear and deleting high health targets, but now I want to go over a couple things I've learned since then. So right off the bat, before I forget, apparently you can throw the batteries at your defenses like a decoy or a turret to heal them. I don't know if this is true, but when my teammate threw one at a decoy, it did stop blinking red. So in between waves, if you have some time, chuck it at the decoy before throwing it at the ADU. You can also ball dupe them by throwing it and hitting your class ability button as soon as you throw it. This may get patched, but ball duping has long been a thing in Destiny 2, so maybe it never will, so you might as well take advantage of it. Another tip is double special loadouts are very viable in this game mode, especially depending on your loadout. Like if you have an indebted kindness and forerunner with an ability heavy build, you will be totally fine. I ran double special with Agger Scepter and Indebted Kindness as well. I used a fusion rifle or grenade launcher with X Deerus. And if you have a machine gun on, well, those have been able to double as a primary weapon all season thanks to their deep ammo reserves. I have done numerous level 50 runs running double special and I've never ran into ammo problems thanks to the ammo crates that spawn when you do a bonus objective and the rally flag you have for the boss rooms. So yeah, don't sleep on double special. And speaking of the boss room, Whisper the Worm got a huge ammo reserve buff and you can craft it with field prep and then can rally with reserves to get 30 shots in the mag. This makes it the GOAT for the wave 50 ogre boss. He has a nice big crit that's easy to hit. And don't sleep on a banner shield to give you a whopping 40% damage increase and safe protection to shoot behind. And if you really want to optimize, throw on Ursa Furiosa so you can get a super back quicker. These strats will help you melt the wave 50 boss much quicker, trust me. He's a tanky bastard, so having the weapon with the highest total damage in the game is a very good option. Okay, so with those quick tips out of the way, I wanted to talk about the incredible power of stasis and why it's so good. On Saturday night, my buddy Timelord and I teamed up to run some onslaughts, and we just used Fire Team Finder for our third. We ended up getting this guy who was a fan of the channel, so shout out to Dominic. Anyways, they told us they hadn't gotten a 50 wave clear yet, but unfortunately on the first run, I was using kind of a whack ass build and we ended up wiping. But I really wanted to try out Stasis that night, and Time Lord was already on Renewal Grasp's Hunter. So we loaded up Vostok and went tryhard mode, and we cooked that shit. I was on my Bleak Watcher setup, but instead of Verglass Curve, I used another favorite weapon of mine in Egger's Scepter. Overload Machine Gun and Trace Rifle are active this week, so that thing freaking shredded through enemies. And also, it's especially nice to run on Warlock, because the Warlock Stasis Super is ass in high end content. So I would just kick Eggers into overdrive with its special perk and melt enemies. Then turn it off and retain like half of my super. I was really impressed with how well this worked. But between my Bleak Watcher's slowing and freezing stuff and Time Lord's oversized Duskfield grenades holding off choke points, I genuinely don't think I had an easier run to wave 50. And Dominic even mentioned in the team chat how easy we made it feel. But trust me, it was the build more than the player. Well, not Time Lord, he's cracked. But my build made me look good. The next run, we picked up another person, and they were on Solar Titan with Consecration. I swept to Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap Titan, and again we rolled through everything. And finally, I doubled up with Time Lord and ran Dusk Fields with Renewal Grasps, and we moved to Midtown because it has tighter choke points, and we basically locked the battlefield down. It was incredible. We had fallen, so the Marauders go invis and can be hard to track, but as soon as they're slowed they become visible, and then they eventually just freeze and you take them out. I also had on Wishkeeper for this run and would lay down snare weaver traps for even more obstacles for the enemies to get past. I should also mention that Time Lord always had Forerunner on for the Tormentors. It is good to always have at least one player on your team running a high damage precision weapon for taking the Tormentors out quickly. But yeah, when a Tormentor would come, we would just kind of kite it away from the ADU and the other guy would focus the adds, and then we would kill the Tormentor after, and your teammates never got overwhelmed by the adds because of how well Stasis just locks them down. So my first full clear of Onslaught was with the Sunbracer's Warlock, and I beat it on a Strand Warlock, and Void Titan, and Arc Warlock, and on all three classes on Stasis, among some others. The point is, I have played a lot and used a variety of builds and loadouts, and I can genuinely say my easiest runs were with Stasis. And it makes sense when you think about the game mode. It is a horde mode, and most of the time when a team wipes, it is because you get overwhelmed by too many adds. Solar is great for quickly deleting enemies, but if you screw up a melee and miss your Sunbracer's proc on Warlock, or you don't have a Consecration melee ready to delete a bunch of adds, then they will converge on you quickly. The other classes are all much more offensive, where Stasis, ever since it came in the game, has been a defensive subclass. 
I've soloed the Insight Terminus GM a few times. I did it with a Solar Warlock in Season of the Haunted and Voidlock in Seraph, I believe it was. And I did it in like 22 minutes. But I tried Stasis Warlock that season too. I wiped at the very end and then was just too busy to go back and beat it. But that run almost made me make a video talking about how weak Stasis was. Because I was like, why would I want a subclass that locks down the enemies when I can just kill them instead? I didn't make the video because I was too busy in real life, but I really wanted to talk about how badly Stasis needed a buff. But now with this horde mode, I think maybe it doesn't. Now first, I was using both the Stasis artifact mods in my build which greatly increases the viability of Stasis and really has made it a lot more fun for me to run this season. I honestly have grown to love it. I hope these artifact mods get implemented in some way into the base kit because yeah, it's feeling really good right now. But anyways, I used to say it sucked because I always thought the best defense is a good offense. And in 99% of situations in Destiny, that is true. We are so strong now that you can pretty much just delete all the enemies before they even become a problem. Birthplace of the Vile boss room is a great example of this. I can use Consecration and just obliterate everything as it spawns, which never gives the enemies a chance to spread out and become a problem. But what happens when they do spread out? Or there are too many spawn points all at once for three people to handle. So the adds do get a chance to get up on you and overwhelm you. That is where stasis comes into play. It gives you one key thing that no other subclass gives you. Time. If enemies are pushing your ADU faster than you can kill them, your ADU will take damage. But how do you get more time to deal with them? Slow them down. I've been using a Riptide with Chill Clip, and even that is nice for slowing down those cursed thralls that absolutely take off towards the ADU. So back to the builds, the Bleak Watchers slow them immediately if you place it in a good spot, and then you can just slowly plink away at them when they are slowed or frozen. And your Ice Flare Bolts will chain and freeze other enemies, so you just keep whole spawn points locked down from a safe distance. Stasis Titan, this is probably the weakest for overall crowd control, but the strongest for killing things. You make a diamond lance and throw it, which freezes enemies, and then you kill them and they spawn a crystal with the artifact mod, and then you blow up the crystal to do AoE damage. For this build, I definitely played more aggressive than the other two. I used Howl of the Storm and Glacier Grenades, but it did perform quite well. And the super absolutely wrecks both single targets like the Demolitionists and Waves of Adds. But it definitely doesn't have as high of uptime on abilities as the Hunter and Warlock builds. And lastly, on the Hunter, the Renewal Grasp's grenade is huge with Touch of Winter, so you throw it in a spawn and then just kill them. And the cooldown can be very quick, so you just keep doing this over and over. And then your Shuriken melee also slows targets and bounces off multiple enemies, so run this with Gambler's Dodge, and again, you can slow enemies to give yourself more time to deal with them all. And that can be really crucial for getting through the later waves and keeping your ADU intact. Like I said, I truly have not had as chiller runs as those three when Time Lord and I were on stasis characters. And back to the defense being the best offense, I still stand by my videos talking about how good and fun roaming supers are in Onslaught, and it's true. But if you don't know how to be fully aggressive and take things out before they get out of hand, then you may end up wiping. Where with stasis, like I said, it made it feel chill and relaxed. Nothing felt overwhelming, and lots of people are saying the meta is well of Radiance and Tether. And yes, they're good. But again, think about it. Those are defensive supers. But they are only good when you have your super. Where with stasis, the uptime of abilities that can lock enemies down is near permanent if you make and use your build properly. Anyways, yesterday I made a community post saying how busy my life is and that I have to slow down the content grind for a little while. And I am quite sad about it because I do have so many awesome videos I want to share with you. But sadly, I won't have time to make them all. I will do my best and make videos when I can, but I am going to be very busy leading up to the final shape. But I just wanted to thank everyone for the nice comments on that post. I do really appreciate it. And all the support in general over the last few months. But yeah, I really wanted to make this video to talk about stasis being awesome in Onslaught because it is truly effective at just keeping things less hectic and far more manageable. But that's it. I hope you try out stasis and are able to beat a wave 50. Like and sub and all that good stuff too. Take care.